The Volunteer Nation is gathering at Neyland Stadium on the banks of the Tennessee River. They come on foot. They come on the water. They come in large numbers. More than 108,000 expected to be on hand for this afternoon's early season pivotal game between the fourth-ranked Gators of Florida and the ninth-ranked Volunteers of Tennessee. And on the field, one of the wonderful moments in college football, the parting of the tee and the entrance of the Volunteers into Neyland Stadium. I'm Vern Lundquist along with Todd Blackledge. We welcome all of you to our CBS coverage of college football in the year 2000. These two great rivals, particularly in the last decade, so, so much success, and yet question marks, Todd, this year, particularly at the quarterback spot. Yeah, quarterback controversy in Florida. There's a new twist. It's been that way ever since Danny Werfel left. And again today, Jesse Palmer, the senior, will get the start. He's got big game experience. He's got starting experience, but he needs a defining game. Today could be that game. If he doesn't get it done, we might see redshirt freshman Rex Grossman. Now, Rex played extremely well last week, but Vern, let's face it, it was Middle Tennessee State, not the University of Tennessee Volunteers. On the other side of the ball, Philip Fulmer will call on a redshirt uh, sophomore quarterback in A.J. Suggs. Well, here's an interesting note here. Jesse Palmer has more starting experience here in Neyland Stadium than A.J. Suggs does. This will be his first start. He's got a lot of the great intangibles, charisma, poise, leadership. The question is, can he make enough plays with his arm, with his feet, to beat a team like Florida? If Suggs really struggles, we might see another quarterback, true freshman Casey Clawson out of Northridge, California. He's the most talented quarterback on the Tennessee roster, but he missed a couple weeks with tendonitis in his shoulder. He's a little behind. May not be the time for him to take over the job. Both of these schools, of course, with gaudy reputations in throwing the football, the irony that it may come down to who has the better rushing game. Well, that's been the case since 1990. Whoever has rushed for the most yards is 10-0 in the last 10 games. There's also a couple other factors. Who's most efficient in the red zone? Protecting the football, getting it in the end zone. And the team that has committed the fewest turnovers has only lost twice. One of the rare exceptions, last year the Gators had five turnovers, still found a way to win. Todd, it's a pleasure for all of us to welcome the newest member of our CBS family. Her roots go deep in the SEC. Her dad, Rick Arrington, played for Vince Dooley at the University of Georgia. He was a letterman in 1966. Join us in welcoming to the sidelines, Jill Arrington. Jill? Thanks a lot, Vern. You know, A.J. Suggs is in the biggest game of his career going up as a freshman against Florida today. But he got some advice this week from some guys who've been there before. T. Martin stopped by practice on Monday. He said, you know what, A.J., just relax, be patient, and wait for the opportunity. And when it comes, believe in yourself that you can do it. He also got a call from Peyton Manning this week wishing him well, wishing him good luck. And it also helps that he roomed with T. Martin on the road last year, so I'm sure he picked up some tips from him, too. Vern. All right, Jill, I'll bet you he did. T. Martin was here earlier in the week. And uh, this is a splendid Saturday in September. 67 degrees. Just perfect football condition. Tennessee leads the series in this 30th meeting, but Florida has won six of the last seven. Leonard Scott deep to receive the kick. As Florida won the toss but deferred. And here is Scott up and out of bounds. Across the 25 near the 28 yard line. Tackle made by Vanez Gooch, number 24. A.J. Suggs, born and raised in the Atlanta area, came on in relief of Joey Matthews last uh, two weeks ago in the opener against Southern Mississippi, a red shirt freshman, and this his first start in this most significant game and very important Vern, for him to get off to a good start Randy Sanders offensive coordinator probably call a couple of nice quick throws for him to get started 
They open the shotgun. David Martin is an additional wide receiver. Here's a quick flip out to the left side, and Dante Stallworth cannot hang on to it. Now let's check the offense now for the Volunteers of Tennessee. One victory in the season. They've got Henry and Bartholomew in the backfield. Cedric Wilson and Eric Parker, the wideouts. John Finlayson, who is primarily a blocker at tight end. Coleman, Herrera, Fred Weary, the best of the bunch. Will Ofenhusel and Michael Munoz, whose dad, Anthony, is in attendance today. Second and ten. Three wide receivers set again out of the shotgun. Weary snaps it back. Hand off, Travis Henry. Breaks a tackle, breaks another down the sidelines, first down. Darrell Dixon, number 34, got him, but not before he picked up a volunteer first down. Defensively, Tron LeFevre gets the start today, along with Derek Chambers, Gerald Warren, Gerard Warren, and Alex Brown. Darrell Owens, Matt Ferrier in the middle. They're really weak there uh, because of the absence of Andre Davis out with an injury. And the secondary, Alexander Dixon Johnson and Leto Shepard. Third and one, they spotted the ball short of the first down. So the ball at the 36. That's Will Bartholomew in motion. The handoff. Henry gets two yards, first and ten. Matt Ferrier with the tackle. And Byrne, that's going to be a collision we're going to see all day because Tennessee loves to run out of the I formation, power football, in between the tackles. And that new middle linebacker, Matt Ferrier, is going to get tested physically. Travis Henry, when you try to tackle him, it's like tackling a bowling ball. Spurrier, as you see, in his 11th season as the head coach. Cedric Wilson, Eric Parker, the wideouts now. Backs in the eye. Play fake for Suggs with time. Darts right. Under pressure from Gerard Warren. Completes the play. Catch made by Cedric Wilson. That, the 101st catch of Wilson's career. Really nice presence that time by A.J. Suggs with pressure up the middle. That's the worst place to get pressure is coming right up the middle. He's able to avoid the pressure and then find Cedric Wilson on the sideline. And Wilson does a nice job of coming back to the football, shortening the distance between him and his quarterback. There's the pressure from Gerard Warren and A.J. Suggs. An excellent job hanging in there under the heat. Dante Stallworth on the field now on second down and five. They'll work the middle behind Fred Weary's block out to the 48-yard line. Byron Hardman, number 42, with a tackle. Philip Fulmer, whose roots go deep in Tennessee. He was a, a guard for Bill Battle's team back in the late 60s, early 70s, and has been a coach in some form here since 1980. In his ninth season as the head coach, hasn't had all that much success against Florida, but that's not the case with everybody else. That's amazing. 43% of the games that he has lost have been to the University of Florida. Third and short, less than a yard. They'll try Henry again. And it appears Henry got it. Byrne, this is setting up just the way Philip Fulmer and Randy Sanders wanted for Tennessee. Very important to be effective on first down so that when they get into third down, they have manageable situations where they can run or pass. First and ten at the 49. They go back to the set with which they open the game. Four men spread out and Suggs in the shotgun. Four man rush for Florida. Quick flip out of the backfield. He's got a blocker. He shakes a tackle and then fumbles the ball. It's picked up and coming the other way. Todd Johnson, who had a 76 yard fumble return for a touchdown last week in the win over Middle Tennessee. Picked up this one. This play was set up really well, but Byron Hardman, the outside linebacker, there he is, number 42. Watch him run to the football and strip it away from Cedric Wilson. This play had a nice design. Hardman gets the football. Todd Johnson comes up and a good stop for Florida. Beautiful setting, Neyland Stadium on the banks of the Tennessee River. Florida, after the turnover, has a first down 
At their own 47, here's Jesse Palmer. Drills one out to the left side to Taylor Jacobs, who's getting the start at wide receiver today. Let's go back to the fumble. Well, two things I want you to watch. Number one, I want you to watch Byron Hardman. Watch how fast he runs to the football. And then a little coaching point here. When Cedric Wilson gets the football, you teach receivers or running back, put the ball in the outside arm, away from the defenders. He's got it in the wrong arm, and that enables Hardman to get in there and strip it out for Todd Johnson. Gain of eight on first down. It's second and two at the Tennessee 45. The handoff goes to Robert Gillespie, number 20. And he gets it to the 45, leaving third down. Jesse Palmer, the senior from Ontario. Nepian, Ontario. For the season, four touchdowns and no interceptions, but he's had problems overthrowing wide receivers and missing open men. Yeah, especially on the deep balls. That's been the one thing through his career he has not been real consistent on, but he's actually played pretty well in the first two games, Bernie, even though he got pulled out early in the game last week. Got the hook from Steve Spurrier in the second quarter. Third down. Here's Palmer back. He'll try to rush. He's going to be sacked. Caught and dropped at the 48-yard line by John Henderson, number 98. John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, said we're going to have to lean on our front. We've got a young secondary. We've got to lean on those front guys up front, led by John Henderson. He gets in there with the sack on a big third down play. There's John Chavis, really has done a great job with this Tennessee defense over the last couple years. They've, they've caught up with Florida in speed and athleticism. They feel like they can just line up and play and may the best man win. Allen Ryan on to punt, and Eric Parker, the junior, who's averaged 10 yards per return. Good kick. Has it go over his head. That is a terrific punt. Allen Ryan puts it out of bounds at the three-yard line. How about a 48-yard net? Time called. The scoreless first quarter, 10-18 remaining in the first stands of play. Alex Brown had a game for the ages in Gainesville last year. Time now for the Exxon Virtual Playbook. Well, Vern, he had a huge game because they chose to single block him the whole night. And Alex Brown is too quick off the ball to block with one guy with his speed. He beat the left tackle twice. He beat the right tackle a couple times. And he beat the running back on the way to five sacks. That's how Alex Brown got there last year. Tennessee has a different plan this year. On first down from the three. Up the middle. Travis Henry. And there is Alex Brown, a wonderful feature on him in college football today. Last year in that game, five sacks, one interception. Bobby Bowden watching on television, nicknamed <laughs> him Superman. When you heard his dad say in the feature, he had five, but he missed three. And that's true. He could have had three more sacks in that game. And, you know, the one criticism on Alex Brown last year was that he played good in big games, but in some games he didn't show up. And so far this year, he has shown a greater level of consistency, maintaining that intensity, play in and play out. Second down and nine. Sons will throw from his end zone. Deep right side into double coverage. Up, tipped, incomplete. The intended receiver was Eric Parker and Leto Shepard and Todd Johnson were side by side as they accompanied him down the sideline. Vern, we said Tennessee had a different plan for Alex Brown. Here he is right here. Watch what Tennessee does to him this time. They're going to double team him with a tight end and a tackle. They're not going to let him get in there one on one. Two guys in there responsible for Alex Brown. And now on third down, the freshman Eric Brown has come. Eric Locke, I beg your pardon, has come in. Not at quarterback as he did in the opening game. Here's Suggs, the man under. And Suggs comes left side. Play for the first down at the 15-yard line. Cedric Wilson, who had the fumble on the last series, makes the catch in front of Benny Alexander. Vern, you don't think Philip Fulmer has some confidence in young A.J. Suggs? Backed up in his own end zone, he's throwing on third down. It's a one-man route, maximum protection, and it's just one-on-one. -on -one. Cedric Wilson against Alexander, a lot of cushion, and Suggs in the right place with the football. A lot of confidence for the young quarterback right there. Now Locke, number two, 
Top of your screen, wide right. Backs in the eye on first and ten from the 15. Henry slips the tackle, moves out to the 20. Gerard Warren, number 61, makes the stop. Travis Henry from Frost Proof, Florida, has a chance to become the all-time career-leading rusher at Tennessee. Seven thousand two hundred and twenty four yards down on the field is Will Bartholomew. I think amazingly he had in his senior year at Frost Group over four thousand yards rushing in one season which is almost mind boggling was not recruited real heavily by the Florida schools and this is a game that means an awful lot to him to play against the University of Florida as the starting tailback. This could be a huge loss now. Bartholomew is the fullback. Here he is right there as he's lead blocking. You can see he gets cut from the linebacker and then is under the pile at the end of the play. And that's a, a staple in the Tennessee offense is power football, the fullback leading the tailback. Will Bartholomew, the junior from Nashville. And he'll give way now to Troy Fleming, a redshirt freshman, number 27. You know, it looks like they were kind of holding his shoulder. Uh, his left shoulder looks like it might have been what was bothering him on that hit. And that, again, could be a big loss for Tennessee. David Martin in motion, number 87. Here's Suggs. Got a little time. Wants to run. Dives. That's short of the first down at the 24-yard line for A.J. Suggs. Leto Shepard, number three. Really a, a determined young man, Philip Fulmer telling us yesterday, Todd. He's, he likes his charisma. He loves his leadership. He does have an average arm. Yeah. Ball doesn't always go where he wants it to go, but, you know, that, that other stuff, those, those X factor things, the boys, the leadership, do, team, do the players on the team rally around you? Those things count for an awful lot, particularly in big ball games like this. Third and two, Tennessee early on, perfect on third downs. They converted all three. And with Travis Henry's bounce to the outside, they make it four for four. Well, Todd Johnson, the starting strong safety for Florida, is going to get introduced to Travis Henry on this play. Watch him just blow him away. Travis Henry again, he runs low to the ground. He's very powerful, and all you see is knees and shoulder pads when you go up to tackle him. There's no way to get a clean hit on him, and Todd Johnson just bounced right off of him that time. 5'11", 220, and he picks up the first down with a 12-yard gain. Flying down, dead ball foul. Looks like Buck Gurley might have been uh, drawn across the neutral zone. The center, Fred Weary, was told here, as soon as you feel movement, snap the football. Defense, all side on the play. Defense, first Referee is Al Ford. And let's go down to Jill Arrington for an update on the injury. Well, and over at the Tennessee bench, and Will looks like he just got his bell run. I talked to the trainers. They're trying to check him out to get his head back in the game, but he should be back, guys. All right, Jill, thank you. First and five at the 41 following the five-yard penalty. Suggs will go from the shotgun. Again, they've used this play about four times with this formation, rather. There's a handoff to Henry. Forced to the inside. Look at him. Break tackles. You said tough to bring down? <laughs> wow. a difficult guy to get a handle on because he's low to the ground and he's kind of wide hard to tackle not much of his career spent in the shadow of Jamal Lewis but he opened this year with a 135 yard effort in the win over Southern Miss he gets the handoff again got something going go back to it down to the 45 yard line maybe the 43 Byron Hartman number 42 with the tackle Tennessee has to be able to run the football and so far in the first quarter they've been able to get it done Travis Henry nine carries for 47 yards 
It takes a lot of pressure off a young quarterback if the running game is effective. And right now, it's very effective for the Volunteers. They have moved from their own three to the 43 of Florida. Out of the shotgun, play fake. Flip out, Dante Stallworth. That's bobbled. And will go as an incomplete pass. Stallworth, who had the 51-yard pass reception in the opening game for a touchdown. That's the third time they've run that play. They've tried to, to run that play three times now and, and just get the ball in the hands of a wide receiver quickly with a lead blocker and let him do something. And Dante Stallworth is probably the biggest play guy that Tennessee has. So they're trying to get him the football, but both times they've thrown that screen to him, it's come up incomplete. For Florida, Alex Brown is on the bench and Kennard Ellis is on the field, number 35. Third and two. Volunteers are a perfect four for four thus far. And there's a poor snap from Weary. Suggs heaves it and finds Wilson. Third catch for Cedric Wilson. Already we're seeing a lot about the presence of A.J. Suggs. Bad snap, third down situation. Don't panic, pick the ball up, retreat a couple steps, and still maintain your concentration downfield. Excellent presence in the pocket by A.J. Suggs, not getting rattled and making the completion. And now five of five for Tennessee on third down. Last year, Vern, two of 16, and most of their situations were long yardage. Out of the shotgun on first down and 10. Four-man Florida rush, they hand it off. Here goes Henry. They're spreading them out by formation. They're letting the ends get up the field. That time, Kennard Ellis got right up the field in a pass rush situation, and they slipped the run right in behind him. They're lining up in a passing set, Vern, and running the football and inviting that upfield pass rush by the Florida defense. Now Steve Spurrier with a look of concern for the moment. First down is now 7-0, and Suggs out of the shotgun again. They'll try it on the right side. Stalwart at the 20. Benny Alexander. A.J. Suggs talked about how he approached playing in this game. It, you know, find yourself thinking about it all the time. Sitting in class, it's hard to focus on schoolwork, you know, especially preparing for Florida. And it's, it's tough to admit that, but, uh, you know, football is, is really important in my life. Not that school isn't, but when you're playing a, a big game like this, it's hard to concentrate on anything else. And I've, I've dreamed about it. And actually last night, I, I dreamed the whole night about the football game. And, uh, you know, not real clear what happened. I just remember it. Feeling that feeling that you feel when you're out on the field, and it was good. Uh, so far, anything but a nightmare for A.J. Suggs. He flips this one out to Travis Henry, who is a third receiver. And they move the ball to the 20-yard line. Byron Hardman and Alex Brown, who is back on the field, collaborate for the tackle. Vern, I think there was a little confusion on that play. That one didn't look right from the Tennessee standpoint. Dante Stallworth, the wide receiver, was kind of in the same area where Travis Henry was. And they got the completion, but looked a little bit like a broken play. And it brings up a third down and one of their longest situations of the game, third and eight. Fourteenth play of a drive. The Volunteers a perfect five for five on third down conversions thus far. Third and eight. Double tight end set. Two wide receivers. That's David Martin in motion. Suggs flips it out. Almost too far for Travis Henry. And it slowed him just enough to allow the pursuit led by Alex Brown to get there. And we will be uh, looking at a field goal attempt. This is a play that's in the playbook in order to invite Alex Brown to rush fast up the field and then throw this screen. But Alex Brown, he got knocked at the line of scrimmage and is still able to maintain his composure and get over and get on the play. But you put those little flip screens in to invite that pass rush, put Alex Brown's head on the swivel a little bit. Here's Alex Wall, six for seven inside the 40. This will be marked at the 36 yard line. The kick is up. And the Volunteers take 15 plays to travel from their own three. Walls authors a three-pointer. Tennessee leads it 3-0 after the 15-play drive. Three and a half remaining. A.J. Suggs. 
has looked good thus far. Live aerial views of Neyland Stadium provided by Budweiser's own Bud One Airship, seen by millions on its ongoing Goodwill Tour. This Bud's for you. Crowd expected to exceed 108,000 gathered here in Neyland Stadium. This field opened September 24th, 1921. Tennessee's drive, six minutes and 48 seconds. Matt Jackson is the deep man. As is Bo Carroll, and this will be Carroll at the six. Good special teams coverage. They smother him at the 16-yard line. Stephen Marsh made the tackle. Burn, let's go back and look at what they did to Alex Brown that last play. Now, I want you to watch David Martin right here in the in the screen. He's going to come in. He's 6'4", 215 pounds. Watch him crack back on Alex Brown. Just another way to put Alex Brown's head on a swivel. They double teamed him with the tackle tight end. That time, they brought a wide receiver in motion and cracked back on him. They're going to give him a lot of different looks, try to take that pass rush down a notch or two. Taylor Jacobs breaks out wide to the left. Florida goes from the shotgun, Jesse Palmer. David Jurgensen, the starting center, snaps it back, handoff. Nothing doing for Gillespie. And let's introduce you to the Florida offense. You know the quarterback. Here's Gillespie and Rod Frazier in the backfield. Alex Willis, Taylor Jacobs. The tight end is Aaron Walker. And the offensive line, Mike Pearson, Thomas Moody, David Jerkinson, Leon Hires, and Kenyatta Walker. Loss of one, second down, 11. This offensive line is pretty good at the tackle spot, and Pearson and Walker a little bit untested inside at the two guard and the new center, Jorgensen. Jabbar Gaffney comes in as an extra wide receiver, bottom of the screen, number 10. They throw it to Gaffney, it's tipped and almost... Most intercepted. Teddy Gaines, after the ball was deflected, dived for it. Couldn't hang on. Tennessee jumped into a pressure defense, the old bear defense look, where they covered both the guard and the center. Jesse Palmer trying to throw the quick slant, and the ball deflected, thrown behind the receiver off his back shoulder. And Teddy Gaines almost there for the interception. Third and 11 at the 16. They bring four, drop seven. The pass is caught, but I don't know. No, now they're going to say no catch. Half Golden, number 13, made the defensive play with Eric Westmoreland's help. Take a look now at the top of the screen. They get the, the right route. It's against the zone defense, and the ball is there. But one thing that Willis did, he let that ball come into his body. Rather than catching it with his hands, it came all the way into his body. Then when there was contact, the ball popped out. Allen Ryan on the punt for the second time. Eric Parker awaits the kick at the 40-yard line. This one returnable. Parker. Gets a block, what a wonderful block. And then loses yardage and is down at the 49 yard line. It looked for a moment like he could get huge yardage. This fall on CBS, meet the men and women of crime scene investigation. If you're a victim of crime, they're your best hope for justice. William Peterson and Mark Helgenberger star in the side of crime solving you've never seen. CSI premieres Friday, October 6th on CBS. Great field position again for Florida, or for Tennessee, rather. Again, all these kind of things. The kicking game, a big part of the field position battle in a game that's just going to be a tight football game. And off to Henry. This time, nothing doing. Oh, it's Travis Stevens, number 34, who replaced Travis Henry. And uh, picks up not on the opening play for him this afternoon. Get online and play Aflac Trivia. Just log on to cbs.sportsline.com or America Online, keyword CBS Sportsline. Uh, Stevens, number 34, the junior. 12 carries in the opener against Southern Mississippi for only 13 yards. So 
An unfortunate trend continues. He remains in the backfield with Troy Fleming. Movement. Tennessee moved. I think Toby Champion, the right tackle, who's Before in the ball for was snapped. There was movement by the offensive line. Five yards, still second down. Toby Champion is in. He relieved Michael Munoz early in the ball game last week against Southern Mississippi. He's a very versatile guy. He can play all five offensive line positions, and that was his play. He was in there just a little too anxious to get started. See Bernard Gooden, number 74, is also in the offensive line now. So second and 16 at the 45. There's Toby Champion. Look at this uh, time of possession for Tennessee thus far. And Phil Fulmer told us, Todd, if it's a low-scoring game, I think it yeah. favors us. Now Henry and Stevens in the backfield. Suggs finds Stevens. All down from behind by Matt Ferrier at the 49-yard line. We talked about Alex Brown that in plays in the past. Here he is right here. Take a look at him now. How hard is he working on this play? Actually, they got a hold of the jersey. Toby's got his jersey. He's trying to read the screen. Not a real powerful pass rush that time. Again, the question about Alex Brown, does he, does he crank it up play after play? And then again, you worry, wonder about his conditioning. And I think this year he has really stepped it up. Third and 12. Parker and Martin split wide to the right side. Cedric Wilson bottom of the screen. Here's Suggs. Blitz coming. Suggs comes left, and his receiver running a go route, Eric Wilson, Cedric Wilson, and Suggs throws it to air. So Tennessee unable to use this uh, advantageous field position, and will be forced to punt for the first time. And that brings on one of the co-captains of this team, or tri-captains, actually, David Leverton. One of the premier punters, if not the premier punter in the country. Six punts inside the 20 against Southern Miss. This one just two yards too much. 51-yard punt, but it's a touchback and will come out to the 20-yard line. Leverton, a senior who has already gotten his degree, and among other things, he's got his own website. Do you have your own website? Bert? No, I don't. And the highlight on his website, he may have saved the national championship in 1998 against Florida State with that tackle on a punt return against Peter Ward. And it was a good pop, too. It wasn't just a shoestring deal. I mean, <laughs> he laid a little wood on him, too. Rod Frazier and Gillespie in the backfield. Play action for Palmer. He's got a crossing pattern to his tight end, Kirk Wells. And the ball is ruled incomplete. Wells, who... Had a grab for the first touchdown of the season for Florida in the opener against Ball State. Now let's introduce you now to the volunteer defense. Up front, D'Angelo Lloyd, John Henderson, Edward Kendrick, and Will Overstreet. Fulmer said he might be the best defensive end in the country, Overstreet. Westmoreland, Stevenson, and Anthony Sessions are the linebackers. And a young secondary, Willie Miles, Andre Lott, the veteran, Tyat Golden, and Teddy Gaines. Second and ten. Blitz. Palmer. Dropped. By Rache Caldwell, number 17. Might be one reason he didn't get the start today. Yeah, he's had a problem with that. He has not been consistent catching the football. This is a perfect timing route from Palmer to Caldwell. He's just got to get that head and eyes around and make that catch. The ball's thrown right on the numbers where you want it. Can't come up with the catch. And the third drop today so far for the Florida offense. Javar Gaffney comes back on the field. And splits wide to the left on third and ten. Volunteer, volunteer corners play off. Jacobs tip drop. Knocked away actually by Teddy Gaines. That is 
the third straight three and out for the Gators of Florida. Tennessee tried to create some confusion that time for Jesse Palmer, and they got away with it. They went with a zone blitz. He read it as man-to-man -man and went to the curl route, but a nice break on the football by Teddy Gaines. A nice disguise of coverage that time by John Chavis. Allen Rhino on the punt for the third time. Eric Parker camped at the 37-yard line. Nice and high. Good downfield coverage. Parker avoids two tackles and is cut down as he gets to the 45-yard line. Todd Johnson. And that is the end of the first quarter with our score, Tennessee 3 and 4 to nothing. We'll return right after this message. And a word from your stadium on the campus of the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, quarter number two. And the Volunteers with the only score thus far in the game. They are up by a 3-0 count. On first down and 10, four wide receivers, and they go out of the shotgun. Suggs, quick screen. That's the fourth time they've done this. Eric Rock, number two, the freshman who transferred from Alabama, picks up the first down at the 33-yard line. A gain of 11. And a welcome back, Vern Lundquist, along with Todd Blackledge here at Neyland Stadium. Impressions of the first quarter. Well, I think quite simply, the offensive line that was a little bit questionable for Tennessee has been much better than the Florida defensive line to this point. They've been able to run the football, take the pressure off A.J. Suggs, and then he's made some nice, short, quick throws to complement the running game. Real domination by the Volunteers. 111 yards to one at the end of the first quarter. They come right side. Stalwart. He's out of bounds at the 25. Marquise Westbrook knocked him out of bounds. First quarter stats, 111 yards to one. <laughs> Seven first downs to none for Tennessee. And again, they've thrown that little bubble screen about a half a dozen times already, trying to get the ball in the hands of some playmakers. Eric Locke, Dante Stallworth, Cedric Wilson. Get the ball quickly to those guys and let them make a play out in the open field. Second and two. In a 3-0 game, Fred Weary, number 70. Puts it in the hands of A.J. Suggs. He finds Travis Henry. This time, Henry can't break the tackle. Marquand Manuel, number four, who relinquished his starting spot in this game, made the stop then, the junior from Miami. Really like the play calling shown by Randy Sanders right now, the offensive coordinator at Tennessee. They're getting in passing formations in the shotgun. They're inviting the rush upfield, and they're running the football inside of that rush. They're doing a nice job of, of getting in passing formations and running the football and then complementing it with the quick screen to the wide receivers. That is good for another Tennessee first down. Henry with 67 rushing yards thus far on 11 carries. And Suggs looking very poised at quarterback. He'll come right side. Receivers open. It's Wilson to the five and down at the four. Great block by Toby Champion. Watch him right here get out and lead this play on the quick screen. He's the veteran, the guy that can play a lot of positions. He gets out, gets the one block that you need on Lito Shepard, and then Cedric Wilson makes a couple guys miss. But you got to get that first block by your offensive tackle. The champion came through. That's Wilson's sixth catch of the first half. Bobby Graham breaks wide to the left. David Martin in motion now, number 87. Backs in the eye, they toss it right side. Henry knocked out of bounds at the three yard line. Matt Ferrier, number 43, was up high. And Todd Johnson, number 26, made the initial contact. Yeah. Tennessee not particularly effective in the red zone last year. Turnover's a big reason why. You see 12 when they got in there, and we talked in the opening that red zone efficiency who protects the football and who's able to get it in the end zone or get the field goal has been uh, the winner in this game through the years 
Second and goal. Henry the deep back in the eye. They have it. Henry is down to the one foot line. Matt Ferrier makes the tackle again, number 43. Good push up front by the Tennessee offensive line. At that point, you see Henry stretching for the goal line. Can't quite get the ball across. His head got across, but not the football. John Henderson, a defensive tackle, comes in on offense now as an extra blocker. Third and goal. Quarterback keeper Suggs. Fumble. Who got it? Travis Henry got the football. That ball came shooting out of A.J. Suggs' arm. And Travis Henry able to come up with the recovery. Take a look at this again. They're just trying to go quarterback sneak to the left side and watch the ball shoot out. It just squirts out. There it is right there, bouncing behind the play. And Travis Henry alertly sees the loose ball and gets on it for Tennessee to save a field goal opportunity. Could have been disastrous for the Volunteers. Right and there. noting the yardage needed, that, uh, which is more than two, Notre Dame knocks off Purdue by two today, 23-12. Here's Alex Walls, second field goal attempt of the game. Knocks this one home from 19 yards away. One and seven, they settle for three, and they double their score. Tennessee is up six, nothing. Early second quarter from Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. Tennessee dominating the Florida Gators who were favored coming in. Been a lot of places, Vern, for college football. Pretty tough to beat this scene here in Knoxville. This is a this is a great environment for college football. Amazingly caught. It's my first time ever here, mm. and it is some setting. Chatting with Philip Fulmer about that last night, he said, "Well, it's one of the top three in the country. I would agree." And you could argue over one and two. Fumbled by Matt Jackson. Picks it up at the four. Oh my goodness! Team Richmond, a backup defensive end. A backup defensive end with sprinter speed, and he showed it there as he's the first guy down. Now, the confusion here, somebody's got to call off on this. Make the catch just like two outfielders in baseball. They let the ball hit the ground. Now the play is not set up in Richmond. The first guy down there, six foot four, 252 pounds, originally from Germany, and Leverton loves the coverage by his big defensive end. Ernest Graham is the running back now, Palmer quarterback. Jesse Palmer, one of six. Obviously, the change on the play. They did not get the play off. This will be a dead ball foul. Mike Peterson. Jesse Palmer trying to check off. It's really tough when you're backed up close to the end zone where there's a lot of fans behind you and a little early movement by the left Four tackle, Mike Peterson. Movement by the offensive line. And that's tough to audible when you're right back against that fans. There's not many Florida fans in that part of the end zone. In fact, I don't see any. The Florida fans are in the other end zone. First and 14 at the four. Jacobs breaks it out wide to the right, joined by two other receivers. Tennessee sends three, drops eight. Quick screen, right side. Safety, but close. Now let's uh, find out how that Notre Dame-Purdue game came out. Here's Tim Brando. Vern and Todd, how about a walk-on snapper, a walk-on holder, and a 19-year-old kicker. Nick Senna sends it through, 23-21. Drew Brees had thrown a touchdown pass to Vinnie Sutherland earlier, but the Irish win by two. Back to Vern. All right, Timmy. Well, what, what a great win for Notre Dame. Oh, my goodness. Top schedule early on. Here's Palmer out of the end zone. Deep right side, double coverage. Overthrown, incomplete. Contact made after the ball had sailed over. 
the intended receiver's head. What a great defensive series by Tennessee. They're just not allowing Florida to get anything going offensively. Here's John Chavis, the defensive coordinator. They get the big play on the kick coverage team by Constantine Richmond. Then they get the huge play from Anthony Sessions on the screen pass, and then good coverage down the field on that play, bringing up third and forever out of their own end zone. Forever equals 16. <laughs> The dime package is in now. Blitz is coming into the end zone. They get to Palmer, and he felt the pressure, had to get rid of it a little early, incomplete. My good, oh my. good pressure from Tennessee again, right up on the inside. Watch the hit on Jesse Palmer after he releases it. And right now, a tough place for Allen Ryan. He's got to be right on the back of the end zone, and it'll be a shorter snap. Good chance for a good return for Eric Parker here. Got to be sure you catch the ball and get it out of the end zone. Nice punt. Parker at the 46. Gets a couple of blocks. Out of bounds at the 26. A 20-yard return. After a 43-yard punt. Well, the Tennessee offense back on the field. Let's go down to the sidelines of Jill Arrington. But Tennessee's offensive line might be young, but there is some wisdom behind one of its players, and that's Michael Munoz. I'm standing here with his father, NFL Hall of Famer Anthony Munoz. What kind of advice did you give your son as a freshman coming into such a big game? Well, the one thing we've always talked about is the mental part of the game. You know, technically, he had some great coaches, and we worked a little bit on the technique. But the one thing I always stress with Michael is, you know, don't let the defensive player get in your head. Really concentrate tremendously on your technique, and if you can do that, Keep the advantage with the snap count and just play every play from when the ball snapped to the end of the, you know, the play when the whistle's blown. And I think you'll be okay, but the, the mental part of it is something that we always stress. You're the biggest critic. How does he look out there? So far, I tell you, when he was in there, I'd give him an A right now. Not from a dad standpoint, but I look at, you know, the technical end of it, and I think him and Will on that right side, which is the side I'm watching, have done a tremendous job. All right, well, good luck watching the game. Good luck to your son. Back to you guys. All right, Jill, thank you. Anthony Munoz has been a class act mm. since he played at Southern Cal and all through his career in the NFL. He knows a little bit about good technique for a tackle, I'll tell you. <laughs> Here's Suggs. Left side, he's got Wilson for the seventh catch of the first half and another Tennessee first down. I am very impressed, Todd, with A.J. Suggs. He's getting more and more confident as this game goes along. And he knows he's got a go-to guy, a reliable guy in Cedric Wilson. Wilson just kind of turned Lido Shepard around on that play, and Shepard slipped coming out of the break, and a good completion for A.J. Suggs. There you see 12 of 16 for 89 yards. None of the throws deep down the field, none of the throws where he's holding the ball a long time. He's getting rid of the ball very quickly. On first down. They go from the gun again. Suggs forced out. Heavy pressure. And Good throws decision. it away. Absolutely. You bet. Really a very likable young man. He grew up in the Atlanta area, said his mom and dad were big Georgia Tech fans. They had season tickets to Georgia Tech. But as he matured and uh, grew athletically, he decided he wanted to play in the SEC. It came down to a choice between Tennessee and Georgia. He opted to come here. The story has been told that uh, Chris Sims, of course, Phil's son, also declared for Tennessee. When Sims decided to transfer to Texas, A.J. Suggs called him and tried to talk him out of it. Wanted him to stay at Tennessee. Travis Henry. Oh, baby. Byron Hardman saved the touchdown. He sure did. Travis Henry saw that checkerboard, and he knew he was going there, and he got tripped up at the last minute by Byron Hardman. Take a look at this play now. I think this is Hardman right here. Watch at the end of the play. Now he comes from the inside, just able to get enough of the shoestring. Third and three at the six. Stallworth breaks wide to the left side. Parker is wide right. 
Wilson and Martin are in the slot. They hand it off to Travis Henry. Fumble. That is the second Tennessee fumble inside the 15-yard line. It's the third Tennessee fumble of the game. Gennard Ellis forced it. Herrera, the left tackle, made the recovery. Watch this ball squirt out at the end. He get the hand on the football, and there it is on the ground, and Herrera very alertly from his left guard position jumps on the football. And again, we showed that graphic earlier. Tennessee last year in the red zone, 12 fumbles in the red zone. We've already seen two here in the first half when they get in scoring territory. And so for the third time, Alex Walls is on. I know, ten, I know Florida is struggling on offense, but you better score touchdowns and not just field goals if you want to beat them. Alex Walls, three for three. Smokey the eighth. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot College football will continue after this word from your local station. Nine-nothing Tennessee dominating the Florida Gators here. A team to whom they have lost six out of the last seven games. Of course, that one win so memorable in 1998, 20-17, an overtime victory here at Neyland Stadium. Vern, I want to reiterate the point I made right before the last commercial. I know Florida's struggling offensively right now. No first downs, minus one yard offense, but you don't beat them with field goals very often. When you get down there inside the 10 yard line, you better score some touchdowns. That could come back to hurt Tennessee. Here's Leverton's kickoff, and it is a good one. Taken for the touchback. And the Florida Gators, Kevin Burnett, the freshman defensive back, number 21 down. And here comes Jesse Palmer. 166 yards to minus one. Very nice play calling by Randy Sanders. They've got the running game established, and when they throw it, they're throwing all quick stuff so A.J. Suggs doesn't hold the ball long. Palmer, two of nine for six yards. In and out of the hands of Robert Gillespie. Hell time now for the Aflac trivia question. On September 2nd, Tennessee won its 700th college football game. What school holds the all-time Division I record? We'll have the answer in a few moments. I'll give you an early hint. Dan Deardorff just called. <laughs> Second down and ten. Palmer across the middle, crossing pattern. And that's going to be for the first floor and a first down plus. Alex Willis moves it all the way out across the 50. A gain of 31. Burn this play looked like they were going to throw a screen out to the right. Watch Jesse Palmer look to throw it there. It's not there. He's able to retreat and pick up Willis crossing the middle of the field. Nice job of Jesse Palmer finding another receiver and then Willis breaking some tackles to get Florida their best field position of the first half. Alex Willis who spent the summer working out with Chris Carter and Randy Moss in private sessions in Boca Raton, Florida. First down and 10 after the 31 yard game. Timeout. Gators are taking a beating thus far, but they moved across midfield. All right, Tim here. Florida across midfield for the first time. The shotgun in Bo Carroll, number two. The senior speedster is in at running back. He runs out on the pass pattern. Palmer dances to the right and is forced to keep the ball himself. Caught and dropped as he gets to the 43-yard line. And a nice move by Jesse Palmer. When I was visiting with Steve Spurrier on Tuesday down in Gainesville, he was saying, you know, Rex Grossman, he moves around a little better than Jesse Palmer. I wish Jesse would do that every now and then. Move and, and run the football and make a couple plays. That was a good decision. As soon as he decided to run, he didn't hesitate, got it upfield, and got a good gain out of it. 
Modest numbers for the senior thus far. Out of Ontario. Dad played collegiately at Bowling Green and then for Toronto of the Canadian Football League. And this running play gets nothing as Ernest Graham, number five, had replaced Carroll. And that'll bring up a third down. Right now in the running game, when Florida is trying to run, what's happening is those three interior offensive linemen, Thomas Moody, the left guard, David Jorgensen, in the center, and Leon Hires are getting whipped at the point of attack by the defensive tackles inside for Tennessee. John Henderson and Edric Quint, Edward Kendrick getting the better of it on the inside right now. Third and three. Caldwell breaks off wide right. Graham is the running back, the deep back in the eye. They toss to him, and he has a huge area in which to run. And Graham rumbles all the way down to the 25-yard line, a 17-yard game. This is a great call at the right time, a pressure defense. Pressure's going to come from the outside, and watch Jesse Palmer just flips it right past that pressure. Eric Westmoreland. Just a great call by Steve Spurrier, guessing that they might go into that blitz look and the right call at the right time. Jabbar Gaffney breaks off wide right. Taylor Jacobs, bottom of the screen. Hand off. Good penetration defensively by Tennessee. Graham caught and dropped by John Dev Henderson. Well, the Tennessee coaches, they really love Will Overstreet. They say from an effort and a technique standpoint, they think he's the best defensive end in the country. You see him maintaining good leverage that time, working to the outside. He's there for an assist. D'Angelo Lloyd came from the other side to make the play. But the one thing Will Overstreet wasn't going to do, he wasn't going to get hooked inside and get beat to the corner. Good technique and wait for someone else to make the tackle. Second down, 11. Shotgun again. Volunteers showing a blitz look. They come off the corner. Bomber drills it. Caught. Jacobs circles to the outside and is knocked out of bounds by Gaines at the two-yard line. A 24-yard pickup. What did you say about field goals and touchdowns? you got to score touchdowns because Florida's going to get it cranked up at some point. And this is a great job of Tyler Jacobs catching the football with his hands. Watch the three receivers go down. Now watch him catch it with his hands. Reaches out in front of the defenders, makes the clean grab, and then has the presence to turn up field. Tough in 98 and 99, scoring touchdowns. They were not effective. Graham struggles. Got it, touchdown. With that second effort, he crossed the plane. it here in Knoxville but I think it was a good call and again you said it for a great second effort watch Ernest Graham he has to pop it outside now when he sees the goal line watch him keep driving the legs his knee looked like it was down close to when the ball went across close call for the officials but good effort by Ernest Graham Jeff Chandler with the extra point it is up and good Chandler who missed his first extra point of this year and has missed two field goals Graham no don't know about that one. <laughs> Nine seven Tennessee's lead has been cut to two. 4.23 to go, second quarter. Budweiser and the Bud One Airship are proud to provide you with these live shots coming 1,000 feet above Neyland Stadium. Ernest Graham with a touchdown, caps an 80 yard drive in eight plays and uh, consumed only 327. Here's Chandler's kickoff. Leonard Scott drifts over to his right, grabs it near the sideline. Out to the 20, to the 30, to the 37 yard line. He averaged 27 yards per kick return in 1999. He was held in check in the opener against middle of the Southern Miss, but this one 33 yarder. Let's go back and look at the touchdown or no. Well, Ernest Graham may have gotten a pretty favorable call here from the refereeing crew in Knoxville. Watch the end of the play as Ernest Graham gives the great second effort. Take a look at his 
Knee, it's not down yet right there, though. Take a look as the knee goes down and the ball goes across. Pretty bang-bang play. Tough to call, but it looked like the knee might have been down. First down and 10. Here's Suggs. On the run, intended for Stallworth. Incomplete. Well, this magnificent setting in today's attendance, 108,768. That is an all-time stadium record. They added new sky boxes. I think 72 new sky boxes here to, to find a way to get more people in. And it's kind of like a running battle between Tennessee and Michigan. Right. You know, we'll add, then you add, then we'll add boxes, you add boxes. They both want to have the, uh, the largest on-campus stadium in the country. Out of the shotgun on second and ten. Four wide receivers. Here's Suggs with time. Oh boy, almost overthrew him. But Eric Parker got on the uh, high chair and pulled it in. You know what I like about this, Vern, is I like the concentration of Parker. Whenever a receiver has to go up in the air, he knows he's exposing his back and ribs to a hit that's sure to follow, and he doesn't lose his concentration on the football. He goes up, snags it with his hands, takes the hit, and gets Tennessee the first down. Tackle made by Todd Johnson. Parker comes to the near side on first down and 10, and they stay with the four wide receiver set. Sucks with a magnificent conservative effort. Here's the handoff to Travis Stevens, number 34. Brought down at the 44. Now, yeah. asked you about uh, the Aflac trivia question. Tennessee won its 700th college game. Michigan holds the record, 798. And you wonder who is second, third, and fourth? Notre Dame, Nebraska, Texas, Alabama, Penn State, sir. Ohio State and Tennessee and a footnote Yale no longer a division one school I think won its 800th game today they came in with 799 up the middle Stevens inside the 30 Marquise Westbrook number 28 for the game of 13 can't say enough about this Tennessee offensive line there was a lot of questions about it they've got our freshman and Michael Munoz. They got Anthony Herrera, the left guard, is a first-year player, was a non-qualifier last year. Alex Brown, he's trying to read the play. They're running away from him. Nothing he can do on that play. But again, the offensive line of Tennessee having a good day. Stevens puts his shoulder down and gets an extra two yards because of that. Inside the 25 to the 24, the tackle made by Matt Ferrier, number 43. Matt Ferrier, whose older brother James excelled at Virginia. This middle linebacker spot a real troublesome area for uh, for Florida. Andre Davis went down with the ACL in the first game. And his proposed backup, Travis Carroll, a transfer, sitting out a three-game suspension. He will be back against Kentucky next week. And Andre Davis was really a good player, Vern. He was a physical presence in the middle of this defense that they miss in a game like this. On second down, Stevens. Contact. He won the battle with Mark Juan Manuel, number four. Move the chains, I believe. I think the spot's going to be good. Fred Weary is injured. The most uh, experienced of the offensive linemen, the and, center. And the best player up front. I mean, Fred Weary is a guy that, that they feel if he stays healthy, can play for a long time, not just in college football, but the NFL. And he is definitely the leader. He, he was a starter at left guard last year started 12 games at left guard last year they moved him into the center spot this year in order to uh, kind of play on his leadership and let him hold things together in there and he's a very very important player in this Tennessee offense and this doesn't look real promising for Fred Weary the way he's coming off the field take a look now Fred Weary blocking right in the center right in there watching the end of the play Away from the play. Mm. Hard to see exactly what happened, but Scott Wells is in as his backup now. 
a freshman out of Spring Hill, Tennessee, and the first thing he's got to be concerned with, as long as, as well as A.J. Suggs, make sure you get the good, clean, center-to-quarterback exchange on this third down and short. Scott Wells, the redshirt freshman, number 64. Quarterback sneak. Recall that they tried that quarterback sneak on third and a foot for the touchdown earlier in this quarter, and there was a fumble, but this time, it would appear the exchange worked well with Wells and Suggs, and enough so that they got the first down. Coming up on the AXA Halftime Report, Tim Brando and Spencer Tillman take a look at all the scores and highlights of this exciting day in college football. That's all coming up on the AXA Halftime Report. Travis Henry back on the field now. Watch Dante Stallworth here. They need to get him the football. They look his direction, go into the end zone. Knocked away at the last second. Wow, great play by Lito Shepard, Vern. And that was single coverage. Cedric Wilson having a big day right now. They went after Lito Shepard, the sophomore out of Jacksonville, and watch the coverage. It's the post route. The ball is well thrown, but watch the reaction of Lito Shepard right in front of the receiver. Gets both hands on the football. That's good work by the young corner. 110 to go before the break and second down and 10. Stallworth goes off to the left side. And they'll go from the shotgun again. Cedric Wilson in the slot. Here's the half roll and the full roll. Nice pass. Oh, what a dandy. Into the hands of Bobby Graham. What a nice play by A.J. Suggs. And the volunteers will use one of their timeouts. Under a minute to play in the first half. They're doing a good job of moving the quarterback around. A.J. Suggs finds his receiver, brings up third and short. 54 seconds to go before the halftime break. 9-7 Tennessee. This volunteer defense having just given up an 80-yard drive to Florida. The offense comes back and has driven well. They've got a third and inches now. What a great response by this Tennessee offense. They've got to call another timeout. They don't have the right personnel in the huddle on the field, and they've just burned another timeout. My goodness. Yep. So since they have given us an opportunity, we'll make the company some money. went ahead and started to play football, so we're back. Travis Henry on the carry. Now we'll see about the spot. The clock at 40 seconds. Stopped at 39. Look at Alex Brown today. Three tackles, no sacks, and no real pressures on the quarterback either. They've done a nice job of they wanted to put his head on a swivel, and I think they've done that, Vern. They've doubled him. They've cracked back on him. They've run away from him. He's dropped into pass coverage some and pretty much has been a non-factor in this first half. I don't think it's from a lack of effort, but good game planning by Tennessee. Tennessee, by the way, was not charged with the second timeout. That was a clock reset. So they both used only one. What a great answer from the Tennessee offense after Florida scored to get back in the game to go right back down the field and get in the red zone again. Here's Suggs looking left. He'll have to scramble. And there is resistance. Clock is running. Second down and goal. They used their second timeout. And the clock stopped with 24 seconds to go before the break. Tried to go to that wide receiver screen again that time that time it was well defended by Florida and Suggs realized he couldn't get the ball there tried to run for some yardage and then wisely called timeout at the end of the play and with this timeout it's time for our Army Heritage moment and one of the traditions here at Tennessee the volunteer walk led by head coach Phil Fulmer the volunteers walk from their athletic center down Peyton Manning Pass yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Peyton Manning's got a streak. T. Martin's got a streak. Bill Fulmer's got a streak. 
And we come to you from Neyland Stadium. Peyton Manning, by the way, despite the fact that the Colts have the week off, is not here. He is in Nashville watching his brother Eli play as Ole Miss visits Vanderbilt. Fred Weary being taken into the locker room. Look at Fred, though. He wants to watch this play. He doesn't want to go in quite yet. He's watching his teammates and his backup, Scott Wells. This time it's Florida taking a timeout. 24 seconds to go. 24 seconds before halftime, both teams with one timeout left. Parker and Wilson break off to the left side. Suggs under center. Scott Wells is that man now. Play action. Suggs drive in front under the screen. Nobody was open. He finds Wilson, and Wilson is down at the three-yard line. Another fumble. And no indication yet that possession has been changed. Tennessee still has one timeout left. Now they have to. Well, they're going to have to hurry. Four seconds. They're going to have to try another field goal, Vern. Again, they get inside the 10 yard line and they've got to go for the field goal attempt. Steve Spurrier knows he dodged a bullet here again in the first half. Let's look at that uh, fumble one more time. Watch the end of the play. The ball is out before he hits the ground. It is out. And Tennessee able to come up with the recovery, but the third fumble in the red zone for Tennessee in this ball game. They've moved the ball, they've marched down the field, they've run it, they've thrown it, but they've fumbled it when they get in the red zone. That's Wilson's second fumble in the game. Five times now, Tennessee has been inside Florida territory. That's five out of six possessions. Third time they fumbled inside the 10. And Alex Walls will attempt his fourth field goal. Seth Reagan is the holder. Dan Stacy will snap it back. Up and good. But the Volunteers again have to settle for three instead of seven. Nevertheless, they lead at the half, 12-7. Let's check in with Jill Arrington and Steve Spurrier. It took a little time to get your team going in the first half, but how important was that touchdown for you guys? Jill, we're very fortunate to be in the ball game right now. Tennessee has dominated us. They've out-hustled, out-coached us. We're very fortunate to only be down five points, and if we can start playing a little bit, we'll have a chance. What adjustments are you going to have your team make coming into the second half to get ahead? Well, we got to play with a little bit more effort, smarts, and, and make some plays and catch the ball, things like that. All right, well, good luck to you, Coach. Back to you, Vern. All right, Jill, thank you. This beautiful setting on the banks of the Tennessee River in downtown Knoxville, Tennessee. The team leading at halftime in the 90s has won eight out of nine. Let's go back to Tim Brando in New York. 7 for Tennessee field goals. And Ernest Gray on Florida touchdown. But uh, as Phil Fulmer told Jill Arrington in their conversation, we need touchdowns. They did so many things well in that first half, Vern. Controlled the clock, ran the football, took pressure off A.J. Suggs. Their defense swarmed to the football, and boy, just a dominant first half for Tennessee. David Leverton kicks off. Matt Jackson and Leverton again. Oh, Jackson's going to run it out. Not sure the wisdom of that play. Flags are down, and this one could come back. And it's uh, Gillespie instead of Jackson. Number 20 went back into the end zone and returned his first kickoff of the year. Now referee Al Ford will let us know about the infraction. 10 yard holding field on the return. The first down. 
So it goes back inside the 20 and we get set for the start of quarter number three impressions. Well I, again just a dominant effort by Tennessee and I, I talked to Gerard Warren earlier in the week and he said their goal on defense was to stop the run and then turn the dogs loose. Well the only dog that's been out of the kennel here is Smokey that one right there. No other dogs are barking in this stadium except for Smokey. Gillespie at the running back spot Jesse Palmer is the quarterback rush coming crossing pattern underneath. It was tipped by Edward Kendrick, number 93. Kendrick, a sophomore, 6'4", 265-pounder. Second and 10. Jabbar Gaffney comes near side. Gillespie is the running back. He is the lone back behind Jesse Palmer. Volunteers threaten the blitz. They're sending only four. Good pressure. The pass complete right side. And let's check in with Jill Arrington. I've checked on Fred Weary here on the sidelines. He has a mild contusion, a mild sprain on that right ankle. He doesn't feel good enough to go in. They retaped him. They tested him on the sideline, but he's not going to go back in. Back to you, Vern. All right, Jill, thank you. He, of course, as Todd said, is the best of the offensive linemen. A tough, tough loss for Tennessee because not only is he a great player, but he gives that presence, that leadership in the center of that offensive line that has played so well here in the fall game. 21-yard gain in the pass completion to Kirk Wells, the tight end. Palmer dances out of a potential tackle, throws it over the head of Taylor Jacobs. Pressure was coming from John Henderson, the junior. Defensive tackle. Well, how did it go statistically at halftime? Domination by Tennessee. Now, more dominating than the score would indicate because of those fumbles in the red zone and having to settle for field goals. But look at the rushing yardage again. That's been the the keystone uh, statistic in this series in the last 10 years. The team that runs the football the best wins every time. Tennessee with that three down lineman set now they've got six defensive backs in on third second and ten They rush four. Palmer comes to the right hit from behind and dropped at the 36 yard line Let's go back to New York and check in Wisconsin. Here's Tim Brando Vern we told you at halftime what a wild one it was. How about this? Jason Monarelli 46 yards to tie the game. They've gone to overtime. Cincinnati has the ball inside the five. Their first possession. Wisconsin yet to touch the ball in OT. All right, thank you, Tim. That's a huge number right there. Tennessee having much better of it on third down. Another long yardage situation for the Gators right here. Volunteers will bring four. And there's Gaffney, the wide receiver. With such a great Florida heritage, that's a third down conversion. Gaffney's dad, Derek, played for the Gators, as did three of his uncles, Don Warren and Johnny. Nice concentration by both Palmer and Gaffney. The slant route, well run. Good timing by Palmer. The ball down low and out in front of Gaffney. And a nice pickup on third down. That's a great timing route on the quick slant. Rod Frazier in a fullback. First down and 10. Here's Gillespie slithering over left guard and inside the 50 across the 45 to the 44 yard line. And the first decent run play that Florida has had in this ball game. Nice block leading that time. Leon hires the right guard pulled around and led Gillespie through the hole. And the first real positive running play for the Florida Gators. Six yards, the longest running play. Rushing yards today, negative. Frazier and Graham in the backfield now. Rod Frazier, the fullback, he leads the way for Graham, who tries to bounce it to the outside, steps out of the tackle, and gets down inside the 30-yard line, or very near it. A 13-yard gain. Constantine Ritzman, number six, with the stop. That's really surprising to me, too, Vern, because the speed of this Tennessee defense, you don't see many people be able to turn the corner on that defense. And, and Ernest Graham is not the speed back. Bo Carroll is, but he was still able to get to the corner and get upfield for the nice game. Florida with a very impressive offensive set to open the second half. Corner blitz. 
Palmer reads it, fires it out on the right side. That's complete to Gaffney again at the 24-yard line. Well, regional action for you tomorrow, the NFL on CBS. In the early games, Buffalo at the Jets, Cincinnati at Jacksonville, Pittsburgh and Cleveland. And later on, Denver at Oakland or San Diego at Kansas City. It all begins with the NFL today at 12 noon Eastern time. Randy Cross, not in that group. He's out uh, replacing Sam Weiss this week. By the way, you've got a little extra duty the last couple of weeks. A little extra duty with the NFL, but it's tough to beat this right here. Yeah. Second down and two. Graham, first down, Florida at the 19-yard line. Ernest Graham, a sophomore from Fort Myers. Albert Hainsworth, number 92, makes the tackle. Steve Spurrier in his 11th season of course born in Florida raised in Johnson City Tennessee then went back to Gainesville and played there now in his 11th season at his alma mater and never played against Tennessee right well, a great career at Florida but never played against Tennessee but he sure has coached well against them Gators go out of the shotgun David Jurgensen the center number 54 over the ball four down linemen for the volunteers they bring them all a pump, a little bobble. Here's Palmer stumbling. Caught and dropped at the 18-yard line. Anthony Sessions, number 22, the outside linebacker. <laughs> former defensive back, a junior college transfer. Had a big, big first game yeah. against Southern Mississippi. Yeah, 11 tackles, two and a half sacks, and he is a phenomenal athlete. I mean, junior college played a little bit of everything. Returned punts. He was a quarterback, a wide receiver, a strong safety. He's bulked up a little bit and uh, playing this outside linebacker position, but a very, very athletic guy. Second down, three wide receivers now for the Gators on second and nine. Nice slant pattern. Gaffney inside the 10, close to first down yardage. They've done that combination a couple times now, Byrne. The tight end's running the little arrow route. The wide receiver comes in on the slant. A guy by the name of Dan Marino made a whole lot of completions throwing that little combination down at Miami. But it's a, it's a quick read for the quarterback. You're just reading the movement, and you either throw the slant first or the arrow route second. Not quite. Field goal will give them the lead. They need about a foot for the first down. Red zone defense in 1999. It's the amazing thing right there. Only two possessions allowed per game. I mean, they don't let you get down in there very often, and then they're pretty stingy when you do get there. Third and a foot. Graham. The running back behind Rod Frazier, quarterback sneak, Palmer, right side, appears to have enough. No, Vern, I was really impressed with what I saw from A.J. Suggs the whole first half. I'm very impressed what I'm seeing in Jesse Palmer in this part of the game here in the second half. He's come out, he's confident, he's making good, solid throws, he's moving the football team. It's been a struggle for them offensively so far in this ballgame, but this is an impressive drive coming out of the locker room by Jesse Palmer. First and goal, Florida. 13th play of the drive. Toss right. Pressure. Graham caught behind the line. But the first contact is missed by D'Angelo Lloyd. And Teddy Gaines comes up to make the tackle. They got a big play out of this earlier in the ballgame. They caught Tennessee in a blitz. This time, they're going to try to flip it out to Ernest Graham again. And you see Lloyd is the first guy there. He doesn't make the tackle, but he slows him up enough to allow Teddy Gaines to get there. Watch the quickness in the pursuit of this Tennessee defense. They can really run, and they're able to stop that for a short game. On second and goal, Steve Spurrier has his offense split three receivers to the left side. And Palmer in the shotgun. Pressure throws it away. The pressure came from Rashad Moore, number 58. I think that Jesse Palmer was looking for his tight end, Kirk Wells, on that, and he fell down. And you see Steve Spurrier not happy with the result of that play. Kirk Wells was working to the middle of the field and slipped and fell down on his route. Third and goal. Gaffney, Willis, and Brian Hoggerbrook break off to the left side. 
Taylor Jacobs, wide right. Palmer with time, incomplete. Intended for Gaffney, a little too high. Tennessee has brought a lot of pressure, but this time they're not going to pressure. They're going to drop all these guys back in coverage and just rush four and try to just close down all the throwing lanes for Jesse Palmer. They do a nice job getting underneath the route. Eric Westmoreland right there in front of that route. Nowhere to go with the football for Jesse Palmer. Jeff Chandler for the Florida lead. 21 of 24 last year. And good on this one from 24 yards out. Mighty impressive opening drive for the Florida Gators. It quiets the crowd. Twelve ten Tennessee and a mea culpa here somewhere in this plethora of field goals. I missed one. <laughs> Forgot it. It's twelve ten. Florida still trails by two. Here's Leonard Scott. This one may come back, and it's going to be a tough break for Tennessee if it does, because Scott. Moves out near the 40 yard line. Both these teams feature some dangerous, dangerous return men. Leonard Scott returned a kick against Georgia 100 yards for a touchdown last year. Lito Shepard returned a punt for Florida last week against Middle Tennessee. Bo Carroll, of course, a great kick returner. And those are the kind of plays that can really uh, change momentum quickly in a ball game. During the return, blocking the back, back, back half the distance, first down 10. Very costly, all the way back mm. to the eight yard line. So, volunteers still lead by two. Alex Brown, a quiet factor in this game. On first down and 10, A.J. Sucks continues at quarterback, the handoff to Travis Henry. Picks up one. And let's find out what happened to Wisconsin and Cincinnati. Back to New York, here's Tim Brennan. Oh, so Vern, you want to know about that wild one? Well, I got it for you. Here's Eddie Faulkner playing for Michael Bennett out because of those NCAA sanctions. Wisconsin escapes 25-28. A three-point narrow escape against Cincinnati. Back to Vern. Thank you, Tim. Timmy B thinks Wisconsin's going to play in the national championship game. I wonder if he's singing the same tune here today. <laughs> Quieter. Henry. Out to the 15-yard line. Well, remember a year ago, Alex Brown had those five tackles and interception and a couple of pass deflections. How about the first half? Well, a different plan from Tennessee in this ball game. They weren't going to let him out there and make all those plays. They single blocked him a couple times, but they threw the screen right behind him. And they double teamed him with the tackle on the tight end a couple times. They weren't going to let Alex Brown dictate the ball game. They double teamed him. They cracked back on him. They threw screens around him. They did a nice job of taking him out of the ball game. Third and three. Sucks. And the shotgun. Five man rush. Oh, That's boy. intercepted. Leto Shepard heads for the good zone and scores in. waited a second and a half too long watch him hesitate now he gets the ball and he doesn't throw this on timing he waits he waits he throws it too late and Lito Shepard is raiding right underneath it to make the interception just too much of a hesitation by AJ Suggs on that throw extra point by Jeff Chandler is good Cedric Wilson has had a huge game, but Lito Shepard gets the better of it this time. Reads the route, jumps it, and takes it to the house. Now Florida leads. A.J. Suggs chatting with the assistant coaches upstairs after throwing the interception. And it's really important right now for Randy Sanders to calm him down and get him back in this ball game. Make sure he's okay for this next series. Chandler kicks it. Leonard Scott in the end zone. And that'll be a touchback. 
Take another look at this interception. Tennessee may have gone to the well one too many times. They're trying to run this screen again, but it's well covered, so his secondary receiver is back on the backside. Watch Suggs look. He wants to throw the screen. It's not there. He comes back late to the backside, and Lito Shepard wasn't fooled at all, just waited for the throw. And again, now the mindset of A.J. Suggs. Everything was going his way through the most part of the ball game. He just had a costly mistake. How does he respond now as a competitor? Four wide receivers set again. Well, the Gators quieted in the first half. Scored 10 unanswered in the first 93 seconds. Here's Henry. He's got a little bit of room. Now to the 27-yard line. Sunday on 60 Minutes. If you want to know what's up with the beautiful people, read Liz Smith. If you want to know what's up with Liz Smith, watch this Sunday's 60 Minutes. What's up? <laughs> you, what's knew, up? you know I had to go there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't have quite the tongue extension there, Todd, that I expected. <laughs> Second down. And three. Henry and Fleming in the backfield. Will Bartholomew hurt early in this ball game and has not returned. There's a fumble on the snap. And remember, there's another center in. Scott Wells, the backup center, is still in the game for Fred Weary. And that time it looks like he snapped it before anybody else was ready for the ball to be snapped. Scott Wells is in there and Gerard Warren and Buck Gurley in there right over top of him and he snapped it early. That was one where he thought the snap count was one and everybody else thought it was two. Kind of an embarrassing moment for a center. Third and three. Tennessee was outstanding on third down in the first half. This is a big one here. Stallworth wide left. Sucks back to throw. Good defensive coverage. Finally lets it go, and it is no good. Fourth down. Another nice job by A.J. Suggs eluding the pressure and buying enough time to get the throw off. Watch Parker as he turns to the sideline. He's open. He's got the first down, but he just can't corral the football. A little bit more concerned about his feet than the ball there. Can't make the catch. On fourth down, here's David Leverton's punt. Lito Shepard gathers it in at the 33-yard line. Flag is down. Shepard tackles the 41. Boy, both teams hurting themselves on special teams penalties right now. That's three in a row on kick returns. to go third quarter. Gators have the ball again. All right, Tim Spencer, thank you. We're back in the third quarter, just under seven minutes remaining. David Leverton of Midland, Texas is our rigid tool scholar athlete of the game. First down and ten. Hainsworth in there. He's a guy with terrific potential, a sophomore out of Hartsville, South Carolina. They said that uh, John Chavis said, we just got to get him to play a little bit more like John Henderson, to work as hard, to have the same kind of approach. Got to play there. Loss of six, second and 16. Ridges School's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the University of Tennessee General Scholarship Fund. That play good out to the 31 yard line for 12 yards. A heck of a run on second down and long there, Vern, because now it brought him up to a, a manageable third down situation. They don't have the third long like they had most of that first half. Third and four. Palmer, incomplete, fourth down. He intended for Taylor Jacobs. So far, we've 
seen no real breakdowns in the kicking game. Florida had a couple punts blocked in the Ball State game. They changed snappers from game one to game two and have been pretty sound since then. But tight ball game like this, you can't afford a breakdown in the kicking game. Low snap, Allen Lyon picks it up and kicks it deep. Parker will let it go out of bounds. And we'll see where they spot this punt. That was close. Tennessee was in there pretty close on that one, Vern. 534 to go third quarter. 17-12. Gators. Good field position for AJ Suggs. Four wide receivers set again with Suggs. Tennessee's best field position of this half. They look for their first first down of this half. Travis Henry gets by the first contact. The second works out to the 48, possibly the 49-yard line. Marcus Akendo Johnson, number 50, makes the stop. A nine-yard gain. Again, we've talked about how hard this guy is to wrap up on. I mean, watch the blocking. As Travis Henry gets outside, watch him just bounce off tacklers. One, two, three defensive backs come up and try to make contact, and he is just a hard guy to get a clean shot on. Nearing a 100-yard effort again, 98 yards on 21 carries. Second and one. Here's Henry. First down. Number 42 makes the tackle. First and ten at the 45. Burn as Travis Henry goes over 100 yards there. The first back for Tennessee to run for 100 yards against Florida since Tony Thompson did it in 1990. So a, a good omen for the Tennessee Volunteers. Here's Henry again. Right up the middle inside the 40 to the 37. Marquand Manuel, number four with the tackle. Take a look at this blocking now. The, watch the offensive line open things up. Look at that right there. Travis Henry able to just get through there real easily. The center wells doesn't get a great block on Hardeman, but enough of a block to allow Travis Henry to hit the hole full speed. He gets a rest. Travis Stevens on the field. Suggs with a play fake. They flip it out. Dante Stallworth. Try it again. He gets by Ratliff, number one. And inside the 15. They have gone to that play six times today. Yeah. And credit Eric Locke with that play because Eric Locke got the block that sprung Dante Stallworth. You've got to have everybody working together on this play. you got three wide receivers out there. One of them catches it. Two of them have to block. Watch the block at the top of the screen. Now on the right side, Eric Locke is going to get a huge block right there that springs Dante Stallworth down the sideline. That's two receivers working well together. A gain of 23 and a first down at the 14. Out of the shotgun again. It's Henry to the room. Spilled as he gets to the five-yard line. Tackle made by Daryl Dixon. Much like the first half, the, the dominance of the Tennessee offensive line getting on their blocks, sticking on their blocks, and then the hard running of Travis Henry, a guy who knows how to get north and south, and then is very hard to tackle when he gets there. The officials will bring the chain out. Trying to, Florida trying to make some wholesale changes on their defense, trying to get some fresh bodies, some fresh legs in against Tennessee. First and goal. Daryl Dixon might have sustained a wrist injury on that tackle. So he heads to the Florida bench. Locke stays on the field with Dante Stallworth. First and goal. Stallworth wide right. Locke wide left. Bernie Vesey also in. 
Bad Bullard makes the tackle on Travis Henry at about the three. Nice play by Bullard, one of those fresh bodies in the game. Again, you just cannot say enough about this offensive line of Tennessee. That was one of the question marks. Florida had a very veteran defensive line, a talented defensive line. How would the Tennessee offensive line match up? I would say very well through the first part of this game, three quarters. On second down, they hand it off to Henry. Near the goal line. No indication yet he's down to one foot line. Marquan Manuel. Well, we saw Ernest Graham get second effort into the end zone for Florida. Travis Henry trying to do the same thing, but you can see he's not in there. The ball's not across the plane. And again for Tennessee now, third and less than one. The last time A.J. Suggs tried quarterback sneak, he fumbled the football. Suggs hands it off. The leap. He fumbles down. No, they call it. All right. The hands went up as yep. the ball came out. The ball crossed the plane and then it came out. seen so many fumbles inside the 10 yard line but watch Travis Henry go up and over the top they can't get to his legs ball clearly in the end zone good call by the officials it came out clearly after the touchdown Bill Fulmer says go for two Parker split wide right I don't think Florida has enough guys on the field ball is snapped Sucks. Cedric Wilson picks it off for two. Burn Florida only had 10 guys on the field. I don't think they had a full 11 on the defensive setup that time, and A.J. Suggs made a pay for it. Take a look now. Florida looks awfully undermanned on this play. They look confused, and A.J. Suggs does a smart thing. He doesn't let him get set. He snaps the football, and he gets the two-point conversion. Philip Fulmer helps join the celebration. And what about the play? of this red shirt freshman A.J. Suggs. He's playing with great poise. You know, I met his brother last night, Tim. He lives in town with A.J. They are very, very close. They got tickets for as many people in their families they could get tickets for. And what a huge, huge first start for the kid out of Powder Springs, Georgia. Kick taken by Gillespie at the seven yard line. And again, fine special teams play by Tennessee. Vern, let's go back to this two point play. I said they had 10. I was wrong. They only had nine guys on the Florida defense. Nine versus 11. You got two receivers out here. Nobody's on him. They tried to run Benny Alexander on late. He came onto the field late, but they still didn't have enough players. And an easy conversion for Tennessee. A 61 yard drive in eight plays. Henry capped it with a one yard touchdown run. Palmer with play action. Deep double coverage overthrown intended for the sophomore Taylor Jacobs and Willie Miles. Number three was the first man back and then he got some help. John Chavis told us the other day he thinks Steve gets the biggest thrill in his offense from completing the deep post pattern and that's the one that John Chavis really tuned into want to not give up and that time great coverage by Tennessee with the corner and the safety coming over the top to help. Second and ten. Palmer 
slant pattern with Shea Campbell. Out to the 37 yard line. Caldwell makes it. A 15 yard gain. Neelan Stadium on the campus of the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. 108,000 plus, just under 109, a new stadium record. And they've seen a good one. Tennessee jumped out with field goals to a 9 0 lead. Florida cut to 9 7. It was 12 7 at the half. Gators scored 10 unanswered to take their first lead, and then Tennessee came back. And now, a nice job of stuffing the play by Albert Hainsworth. That's a couple plays we've seen from the sophomore Albert Hainsworth. Watch him, how quick he is getting in there. Great job of getting penetration inside. Working on Thomas Moody, the left guard. That's just good explosion by a big man. Hainsworth is 6'6", 310 pounds. Second and four. Finds an open receiver. Aaron Walker, the tight end, covered by Teddy Gaines at the 40 yard line. And Steve Spurrier said that the, he really is hoping they'll get more production out of the quarterback and the wide receivers. That's uh, been the disappointment in the first two games. Well, coming in, he thought the team had a chance to have a really big year if those things took care of themselves, but he also thought his defense was going to be pretty good. And so far tonight, the defense has had some problems with Tennessee. Third and eight. Four man rush for Tennessee. That one tipped away. Good defensive play. Intended for Jabbar Gaffney. And Buck Fitzgerald, number 36, makes the play. Buck Fitzgerald is a guy listed way down on our depth charts, but he's in the game and getting a chance to play and does a great job just sitting underneath that route and getting a hand on the football. Alan Ryan will punt. Eric Parker awaits this effort at the 20 yard line. Nice punt by Ryan all the way back to the 10 is Parker. And fine downfield play by the Florida Gators. That will made by Eric Johnson, a backup fullback. We have reached the end of three. Is this one any good? 2017 Tennessee will return to Neyland Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. We began the start of the fourth quarter, nearly 109,000 at Neyland Stadium. Watching the Volunteers and the Gators on first down and 10, handoff. Travis Henry gets a couple. He's got 129 yards on the afternoon. Vern Lundquist along with Todd Blackledge, uh, kind of an interesting contrast yeah. in the way things have gone here. Yeah, it really is. I mean, Tennessee has just been dominant up front. They've been better in the offensive line. They've been better in the defensive line, but they didn't score touchdowns in the first half, and A.J. Suggs made one bad play, the interception return for a touchdown. Otherwise, this game would not be close. Here's Suggs rolling right. Good defensive play by Gus Scott as Florida goes deep on his depth chart. And let's go down and check in with Jill Arrington. We said earlier that Travis Henry was the second all-time leading rusher in high school. He was from Florida and he desperately wanted to go there, but Spurrier had no interest in recruiting him. Back to you guys. And he still uh, thinks about those days, I'm sure. 128 yards officially now, third down and 10. Florida brings five. Suggs rolls right. Lost it deep. That one is uh, dangerous. Yeah. Almost not wide enough. You're going to throw that away. Throw it wide right. And now we'll see if David Leverton can 
get a bomb here, and he is a real weapon as a punter, and Tennessee needs a bomb from him right now. Remember, Lito Shepard returned 154 yards last week against Middle Tennessee State for a touchdown. Here's Leverton's punt. Not his best. Short takes a Tennessee roll. And Lito Shepard has to step aside and let it uh, come to rest at the 35-yard line. So all in all, a positive result. Yep. 2017. Frazier and as a pullback to the left side here's Palmer that one's tipped and up in the air and intercepted picked off and Tennessee has it Dominique Stevenson the middle linebacker goes in the books on Jesse Palmer's an interception but when the ball bounces off his shoulder pad and goes up in the air normally something bad happens watch the ball bounce off of Tyler Jacobs it's well thrown he just doesn't make the catch and when it goes up that high in the air somebody's going to get to it in the wrong jersey and Dominique Stevenson showing his athleticism getting to the football Jesse knows they had a good start they had good field position he made a good throw and now his defense has got their backs against the wall again and it looks like a penalty tacked on at the end of the play there was indeed a flag well I think so we've had no explanation but the ball has been spotted at the 31 a late hit on Florida out of bounds Travis Henry Good sense, he smelled six. Great blocking on the left side of the line. This was a gaping hole for Travis Henry. Watch Coleman and Herrera just open it up. A missed tackle in there by one of the linebackers, and or Daryl Dixon, the free safety, and Travis Henry again saw the end zone, couldn't quite get there. 11 yards for Henry. An outstanding afternoon. Will Bartholomew injured in the first half, back in the lineup at fullback. Suggs hands it off to Henry. Oh, he takes a pop at the line of scrimmage. Gerard Warren, number 61, makes the tackle. Look at that. We talked about it, and you talk about this series. Since 1990, whoever runs for the most yards wins this game. And even going one step further on that with Florida, since 1990, Florida has lost 22 games. 20 of those games, they've been outrushed. And so, I mean, it, it's very consistent with Florida. If they don't run the football, and if they don't stop the run, they don't win. Second and 10 at the 20. Here's the toss. And Henry popped again by Matt Ferrier, the middle linebacker. It'll be third and long. Now the last loss at home for Tennessee 1996 they've won 23 in a row and of course who beat them here yep. the mighty Gators Danny Werfel national championship season Heisman Trophy season and of course Tennessee comes back with a national championship season in 1998 when they won here in overtime against the Florida Gators third and 12 Gus Scott in defensively in the secondary, here's Suggs. Steps up. Eats it. I think that probably is a wise decision. Well, it's not a bad decision at all, Vern. You're right. I mean, it, he, he was looking downfield. He didn't want to force something. Worst case scenario here, you know, you try a long field goal and, and let your defense continue playing. But don't force the ball and make a bad decision. Credit the coverage of the Florida Gators, too, coming up big on a third down and long situation. Alex Walls is on to try another field goal. Seth Reagan will hold it. 42-yard effort. That looks perfect. It is perfect. Alex Walls. 
Jones, a sophomore from Bristol, Virginia, is five for five today. Time goal. Tennessee Volunteers have lost six of their last seven to the Florida Gators, but they lead in this one by six. Bo Carroll, Robert Gillespie await the kickoff of Dave Leverton. Short, out of bounds. And Vern, I, I can't get over this feeling that, that this game, Tennessee, has so outplayed Florida and dominated on both sides and yet Florida is a touchdown away from being in the lead. It's, it's, a, it's a very strange thing. Philip Fulmer has to have a little concern about that, but, but his team has played exceptionally well, other than when they get in the scoring zone, not being able to score some touchdowns. Alex Walls, a career high five for five. That just underlines what you said. They've had to settle for three five times. Bo Carroll is the running back. Ball placed at the 35 after it went out of bounds. And Jesse Palmer, the senior quarterback, has Carroll and Rod Frazier in the backfield behind him. He'll throw on first and 10. Tipped. Caught. Rache Campbell gets the deflection, and now is it ruled incomplete? No, I think it's a completion. Yeah. Anthony Sessions is the guy who gets his hand on the ball, and again, it's tipped up in the air, but this time, the Gators get a lucky bounce. Watch from behind the defense. Anthony Sessions, number 22, is going to get a hand on the football. There it goes straight up in the air again, but this time Caldwell there to make the catch. First and 10 at the 47. Reverse is faked, and the handoff goes over right tackle. Bo Carroll gets it. Tonight on CBS, Survivor has gone back to the island. If you missed any episodes of the summer hit, you're in luck. Here's your chance to catch the television phenomenon of the year. Don't miss it. It's Survivor tonight on CBS. Second and six, Carroll remains in the backfield. That great speed, 10.19 in the 100-meter dash. The NCAA championships, he gets the toss, hands it back to Palmer. Palmer goes right, catches made at the 30. Great catch by Alex Willis. The only receiver coming into this season with experience comes up with a veteran savvy type play right when his team needed it. Now this is a trick play that, that Steve has fooled a lot of people with, but Tennessee was not fooled. It's just Alex Willis had a little separation and Jesse Palmer puts it out away from Teddy Gaines and allows his guy to make the catch. First and 10 at the 29, and Florida will go from the shotgun. They've got Gillespie as the running back. Volunteers show blitz. They are coming. Palmer goes right, straight move. Daphne inside the 10 to the 5. First and goal, Florida. What a move by the freshman Gaffney on Willie Miles. It's a quick hit. You're thinking, well, we'll get a little five-yard completion. But watch the quick spin move by Gaffney. Willie Miles left grabbing after grass. Excellent reactionary move that time by Gaffney. As soon as he got the football, no hesitation on the move. One wide receiver, two tight ends. The toss, Graham caught behind the line. Struggles to get back and is down at the four. Anthony Sessions, number 22, Willie Miles up the hill, second down. Really nice play again by Anthony Sessions, showing that speed, getting into the backfield, and Ernest Graham did a nice job just getting it back towards the line of scrimmage and not getting a loss of yardage play. Second and goal. Caldwell wide right. Willis to the left. Play action. Palmer deep in the end zone. Overthrows a wide open receiver. Cold 
Caldwell was open seven yards deep. He was open in the back of the end zone, and he had stopped and was right there giving a good target to Jesse Palmer. And I think Palmer didn't know anyone was open and threw it away. You know, a quarterback knows he's got a kind of a clock in his head. If that time goes down too far, throw the ball away. Don't take the sack. He never was able to pick up Rashe Caldwell in the end zone. Third and goal. Caldwell and Willis go right. Gaffney, Hogerbrook are left. Palmer. Flag is down. Catch is made. Two flags are down. The player is down at the two-yard line. It's Gillespie. We got a whole bunch of laundry on the field. <laughs> I think there's three flags thrown, and most likely he's going to be holding on Florida. Two of those flags right in the middle of the action. Well, Gillespie caught at the two, so I would think Bill Fulmer would say decline it if the option is ours. Ten yard holding a penalty against the offense. Repeat third down. Hmm. Here's the holding right here. Thomas Moody is going to just tackle Albert Hainsworth as he gets a beat on the quarterback. A little takedown ankle tackle and right in front of the official. Interesting, it would have been fourth and goal from the two. Now we've got third and 15. In years past, I don't know that you give Steve Spurrier's offense another shot with the passing game, but there is no more fear of the Tennessee defense for this Gator offense. They believe there is good man to man to win the individual battles against this offense. Third and goal from the 15, across the middle, incomplete. Eric Westmoreland, the senior tri-captain, tips the ball away. They tried to get the ball to the tight end. Here's Westmoreland right here. Watch him read underneath, get back into coverage, and get a hand on the football. Good reaction by Eric Westmoreland. The tight end was not open. Brings on Jeff Chandler from 32 yards away. And Chandler, the senior from Jacksonville, knocks it home. Bill Fulmer likes what he has seen from his defensive unit. Junior center Fred Weary out in the first half with an ankle injury. Can do uh, not but sit and hope right now. These beautiful shots provided overhead by the Bud One Airship, the aerial ambassador of the King of Beers. 108,000 plus at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville for this one. Here's the kick going deep and out of the end zone. You know, Vern, I made the point earlier that John Chavis and this defense, they feel like now they've got the same kind of athletes that Florida has. They understand the concepts that Steve Spurrier has in the passing game, and they feel very confident in their ability to match up. I think in years past, in the early 90s, in the mid-90s, when Danny Werfel was throwing all kind of touchdowns to Ike Hilliard and Redell Anthony, John Chavis and a lot of defenses, they feared the Gators, but Tennessee does not fear the Florida offense anymore. They believe they can match up and play with them, and they have certainly shown that here today. Travis Henry with another big game, 137 yards. He will add to that with this carry. He's now got 157 yards. And again, you got to start up front. Great blocking up front. He does great tackles, but great blocking on the right side of the line, opening up a nice hole for Travis Henry. And right now, Travis Henry is doing two things for Philip Fulmer. He's gaining yardage, and he's eating up clock. And they want to keep running the football and riding this horse as long as they can do it. Philip Fulmer wants a timeout call. And uh, he doesn't get it. Now, A.J. Suggs looks over at Coach Fulmer, and they call a timeout. They use one of their three. 
Well, A.J. Suggs didn't see it, but Cedric Wilson ran off the sidelines and called the timeout to get it for Philip Fulmer. Twenty-three, twenty, Tennessee. Seven minutes to go. A.J. Suggs under Scott Wells, the center. And they'll go back to Travis Henry. Out to the 43-yard line, Todd Johnson, number 26, with a tackle. And here is the CBSSportsLine.com stat of the day. Rushing. We talked about it at the beginning of the afternoon, Todd. Now some statistics you can kind of throw out the window or you can tweak and make them say whatever you want. But in this series, since 1990, this one has not lied. Whoever has run the football the best has won the game. Second down and seven. They work on the clock, which is under six and a half. Audible by A.J. Suggs. Henry. At the 45. Well, remember that frightening moment on the Saturday after Thanksgiving a year ago? Travis Henry and the Volunteers playing against Vanderbilt. And he took the handoff up and over the top. It looked just horrible. I remember watching this as it occurred on television. Frightening moment for Travis Henry, all volunteer fans, his family. It turned out to be, despite the appearance of a serious injury here, a sprained neck. Yeah. It's obviously fine. Third and five. Five fifty-three to go. Blitz coming from Florida. Good pickup. Suggs can't find his man. Eric Locke had hands on it. It'll be fourth down. I find this remarkable. Travis Henry from Frostproof, Florida. This is his ninth start in his career. And yet he now has 2,061 yards and a reasonable opportunity yeah. before this season is over of becoming the all-time leading volunteer rusher. James Stewart, as you saw, currently has that honor. Here's a fair catch called by Leto Shepard at the 16-yard line. Coming up tonight on CBS. Now, Vern, one other thing about Travis Henry. Last year, a lot of Tennessee people thought he should have been the feature back, and he was actually running better than Jamal Lewis, but he handled not getting his shot very well, and now he is making the most of his opportunity to be the number one guy. Palmer, 5.35 to go, crossing pattern. And Colwell has the catch. A gain of 11. Back to what you've emphasized throughout, despite all of this domination, it's a three-point game. Yeah, I mean, it just feels, the game feels like Tennessee should be winning big. And, and they are in the yardage, and they are in the stats, but not on the scoreboard. On first down to 10, Jesse Palmer goes out of the shotgun. Stunts by the volunteer defense, a pump fake, a deep pass, double coverage, knocked away from Caldwell. At the last second by Andre Lott, Willie Miles was also there. Vern Andre Lott was a starting cornerback last year. He started opposite Dwayne Goodrich, and they moved him to free safety this year to get their four best on the field. He was a little uncomfortable at safety against Southern Miss, but right on the spot on this one. Perfect angle to the football, helping out his corner. And then lays the big hit and separates Caldwell from the football. Second and ten. Willis near side, two wide receivers, wide right. Again, Palmer with a lot of time. Good coverage, and he throws it away. Will Overstreet finally applied pressure. Can't say enough about the coverage. That was good protection. Jesse Palmer had plenty of time to throw the football, but Teddy Gaines and Andre Lodd and Willie Miles and Tad Golden, that secondary back there, doing a nice job sticking right with these Florida receivers. Again, no more fear factor of these receivers running down the field against their defense. They feel they can match up and cover. Five to go, third and ten, ball at the 27. Four-man rush by Tennessee. 
Here comes the rush. Nailed him. Big John Henderson. A great inside stunt that time by John Henderson and Will Overstreet. They crossed up the Florida offensive linemen. Overstreet came to the inside, took up two blockers, and they were late getting to John Henderson. And there you see the sack. Jorgensen, the center, too late to get out and block him. Allen Ryan will punt on fourth down. Fair catch called and taken by Eric Parker at the 43-yard line. Think this game doesn't mean much? Oh, man. John Henderson is just having a, a super junior season. Now John Chavis told us an interesting thing. He said, you know, I never thought a guy 6'4 or bigger could play defensive tackle. I thought you had to be 6'2 in that range. But this guy, John Henderson, proved me wrong. I mean, he's a big guy with a big body, but he has a great work ethic and has made himself a very good defensive tackle. And John Chavis says, hey, you can be that big and play inside. No surprise, Travis Henry gets the ball. The flag is down. So this one might come back. That's a flag thrown by a line judge. Yep. First down, five yard penalty. Two men moving before everybody was set. There was motion on the play. Can't say enough again. Uh, Travis Henry, that's a given, but this offensive line. And Mike Berry, the offensive line coach, I mean, there were a lot of questions coming out of that Southern Miss game. They did not play well as an offensive line unit against Southern Miss. Now, granted, Southern Miss is a good defensive football team. But the improvement that this offensive line has made from week one or game one to game two has been remarkable. Now, the penalty not only cost Tennessee five yards, it stopped the clock. 4.07 to go. Henry. To the 43 yard line, Todd Johnson with the tackle. Florida has all three timeouts remaining. And the clock at 3.53, winding down. And this is the place now after the penalty, now with second and 10. Florida needs to get the stop. There's Mike Berry, the offensive line coach. Second and ten. Henry. Eight more. Welcome those of you who watched the Pitt Penn State game. We are at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. 323 to go. Tennessee up by three, trying to win for only the second time in the last eight meetings between these two. Phil Fulmer in his ninth season, two and six, against Steve Spurrier as the head coach. And this has been as advertised. Yeah, great game. And a huge play right now. A.J. Suggs letting the clock go down as far as he can. They're probably going to call a timeout right before the clock goes down. Bleeding as much as they can. Now it's at 241 for this third and short. Third and one when we return. The ball at the 47 yard line. Tennessee has the lead. And it's 23 20 right now. Third and one. Travis Henry. Great penetration. Oh boy, Buck Gurley, number 99. Is going to get credit, a lot of credit, and deserved on that play. Yep, he got into the backfield and blew the play up. He's not going to get credit for the tackle, but he was in there and stopped things up. Take a look, Buck Gurley right here. Watch the penetration quickly across the line. Slips inside the, tap, the block of Herrera. And a much-needed stop on third down for the Florida Gators, and they have to use one of their timeouts to stop the clock now before the fourth down play. I will complete our... Uh, Exxon scoring summary. Here's Walls from 42 yards out. Then Chandler countered for Florida. If you like field goals, this has been your yeah. dish. This has been your cup of tea. And it's 23-20 right now with 2.25 to go. Stadium opened 79 years ago. Dedicated in the memory of General Robert Nealon in 19.
1962. He, of course, was the legendary coach here from 1926 to 1952 and, and the athletic director until his death in 1962. One of the great places for college football in this country. 23-20, fourth down. And the balls will punt. Leverton hooches it. Oh, boy, is that effective. David Leatherton, 1997, UCLA, was the putter after a redshirt year in UCLA. He knocked one 71 yards, but then got the shanks. And he also missed a snap that led to a safety, was benched, did not play again that year. Had a so-so season in the 98th year of the national championship, but came back last year and was brilliant. And he has added to it. He's a tri-captain now. Burn. Quick note here, Tennessee, two of their starting defensive linemen, D'Angelo Lloyd and John Henderson, are both on the bench with injuries, so some backups in for the Volunteers. Volunteers go with three down linemen. They rush four. Palmer out on the flat to Caldwell, and he makes the grab at the 17-yard line. Two minutes left. Jesse Palmer has two timeouts for the Florida offense. Second down and two. A little surprised that they're in the huddle at this point. Palmer steps up, fires it, caught. That's good for a first down, so the clock will stop while they move the chain. One of the great rules, I think, in college football, and one of the biggest differences between college football and the NFL, the clock does stop while they reset the chains. It allows a quarterback to get the play called, get to the line of scrimmage before they reset the clock. Hogabrook goes right in the slot. First and ten. Stunts by the volunteer defense. Palmer has a man wide right, and it's caught by Jabbar Gaffney. A 33-yard gain. We saw Andre Lott blow up a play in the same kind of coverage earlier against Rache Caldwell. This time, Gaffney hangs on. Lott a little bit later getting to the play. He still puts the big hit, but by that time, Gaffney had secured the football. Great throw, too, by Jesse Palmer in tight coverage. Gaffney's fifth catch, first and ten at the 38. Blitz, Palmer deep left for Caldwell. Diving try incomplete, good coverage. Willie Miles, a junior who is making his second start. Willie Miles was going to get flagged here. He was beaten. It looked like he was going down. Maybe he just got his feet tripped up. But he had his arms around the legs of Rache Caldwell at the end of that play. No call. And Florida was second and ten. Gaffney and Hogabrook go wide right. Remember, they don't need a touchdown here. They're only down three, and they're near the range of Jeff Chandler. Palmer across the middle. Is there contact? Yes, there is. And there are two flags. This will be, I'm sure, interference, Tennessee. And I don't want to say makeup call, but remember the play right before this. There was a little contact at the end of the play. Now the question is, was the ball deflected or not? If there was a deflection, then it wouldn't be interference. Anthony Sessions is going to get in and put a big hit on Jesse Palmer right as he releases this football, right in the midsection. No deflection, and there was early contact. Good call by the official. Florida has elected to use a second timeout. You know, they took the timeout because of Jesse Palmer, Vern. He's a little shaken up with that hit. Time called with 1.06 to go in regulation. Six to go. Here's Palmer out of the shotgun. Looks deep in the end zone. Double coverage in the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Willis. 
Nice play by Willie Miles this time. Had some help from the safety, Tad Golden, but Miles in perfect position. And Philip Fulmer knows that his defensive coverage came up there. Now, the one thing Jesse Palmer's got to be thinking here, Vern, is don't take a sack. You're in field goal range right now for Jeff Chandler, at least to try. You want to take some shots at the end zone, fine, but don't get sacked right here. Caldwell and Willis wide left. Palmer across the middle. Incomplete to Bo Carroll. He could not hang on. Third and ten. Good pressure from Will Overstreet that time. Got in the face of Jesse Palmer. Forced him to throw a little quicker than maybe he wanted to. Well, if they don't gain a yard on third down, it'd be a 43-yard effort. Jeff Chandler, who, as you pointed out, ironically got his job after Collins Cooper missed a 32-yarder for Florida in overtime here two years ago. On third and ten, Palmer back goes in the middle. Caldwell to the five-yard line. Again, the clock stops to set the chain so Jesse Palmer can get up to the line and they can take a shot to win it with a touchdown here on the five-and-a-half-yard line. They've got one timeout to save for that field goal, and that's what you want to save it for. Caldwell wide right. So is Gaffney. From the five, first and goal. Palmer drills it. Caught. Touchdown. Rashay Caldwell, the sophomore from Tampa. receiver downfield. There was an uncovered lineman and an illegal, ineligible receiver downfield. You have three receivers to the top of the screen. They have to make sure the right number are on the line of scrimmage and a tough break for the Gators. Now Palmer back, four man rush, puts it out to Carroll. Carroll with a block, weaves to the five, down at the three. And Florida will use its final timeout, stopping the clock with 20 seconds to go. Mm. Mm. At the three-yard line. Take a look again. Now, you have to have seven guys on the line of scrimmage. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. One of these receivers has to be on the line of scrimmage, and they were all three apparently off the line of scrimmage. Now, that was a late flag, and it was thrown at the two-yard line on the far side. And uh, kind of sat yeah. there unobtrusively for the longest time. There was no uh, debate by Steve Spurrier. No. I mean, he did not seem all upset by the call, but now they're right back in on the three-yard line with 20 seconds and no timeouts. Again, you can't afford the sack, and you can't afford to, to get stopped here. You've got to throw the ball to the end zone. If it's not there, throw it away and kick the tying field goal. Maybe have two shots to the end zone before you have to go for the field goal. Second down from the three. And Palmer moves on the center. Bo Carroll is the running back. Comes the blitz, quick flip, caught. Did he hold it long enough? The official says yes. Oh boy, is that going to be controversial. Gaffney, the freshman. My goodness. Well, there's still a conference going on, but it's a, a play you don't see on the goal line very much. It's just a quick hitch. You see people run fades. Did he have possession of the football or not? 
The referees have said yes. Here it is right down here. Gaffney working on Willie Miles. The quick stop, the throw by Palmer. If he had it, he didn't have it very long, that's for sure. Line judge made the call. The extra point is up. And good. Vern, the referee was right on the line looking at this, and he made the call, touchdown, as soon as the ball hit the belly. I mean, the arms went up right there. Boy, oh boy. A tough call to make. Here it is again, right here on the bottom. The quick throw to Gaffney. Well, the ball crosses the plane. The line judge, Al Matthews, said possession established. And Steve Spurrier, what do you think? John Chavis, his defense has played so well today. And this last drive, Jesse Palmer makes a couple plays, and Jabbar Gaffney comes to the forefront. This young wide receiver core, Jabbar Gaffney, a couple of huge catches down the stretch for the Gators. Jesse Palmer and Jabbar Gaffney add to the lore of this series. And Vern again, you know, whether that was a catch or not, the bottom line again, Tennessee settled for too many field goals when they were inside scoring territory and had a chance to put this game out of reach with touchdowns. They couldn't do it in the first half. Settled for four field goals in the first half. And give the Gators credit, they go 91 yards yeah. for the go-ahead touchdown. This one picked up by Scott. Out to the 35-yard line with nine seconds remaining. Tennessee has one timeout, nine seconds. You've got David Leverton, who would probably try the long field goal if they can get one completion here. It's Florida with the extra point up by four, and is it is it going to be if they pull this one out? My goodness, from the 35. Suggs, left side, incomplete. Intended for Cedric Wilson. Well, the only chance you have here is the Hail Mary throw, throw it up in the air and hope that you can get a deflection and a big play. Four seconds to go. 27 23. AJ Suggs tackled and dropped, and this one's in the history books. And inexplicably, the Florida Gators go 91 yards to come from behind and edge the Tennessee Volunteers in an ending that will be talked about for years. Did he or did he not have possession? The story of redemption, of course, for Jabbar Gaffney, who was kicked off this team and lost his scholarship when charged with stealing seven months ago, asked for a chance to come back. His parents are paying his tuition, and he catches the winning touchdown, 20 of 43 for Jesse Palmer. And let's go down to Jill Arrington and Steve Spurry. Quit. How do you feel and how proud are you for your guys to hang in there and win? Yeah, first of all, Jill, Tennessee outplayed us today. And uh, but maybe we outplayed them two years ago and they won the game. So it's the team sometimes plays the best and always win. And they really moved it up and down. They ran it. We're very fortunate. God really smiled on the Gators today because because they outplayed us. Hi, what do you think of that last touchdown? Jesse Palmer really hung in there for you and got it done. He did. We hit a few little third downs here and there and our receivers. We can't get them lined up correctly. Had a touchdown call back, but 
And I know that was a close call on that last touchdown, so we were, we were very fortunate, very fortunate. Congratulations, Coach. Good game. Back to you guys. And Todd, let's uh, re-examine the winning touchdown catch by Jabbar Gaffney. Well, it happened right down here. Single coverage, Gaffney on Willie Miles. It's a quick throw. And the referee right here is looking right in at it. Calls touchdown right away. And of course, once the ball crosses the plane, that's the score if he has established possession. Mm. 27 23. 